So we have Cody versus Dan. Looks like they yeah. are pulling up deck lists right now. Yeah. Cody is 1 1, I think? Cody's 1 1, yeah. Okay. So he beat Jake. Okay. And then lost to Mason nice. in a uh, butt stomping. Yeah. All right, so let's let's take a look at their lists if we can, if we can find it. So this list is fun. This match is fun because this is the so kind of merry, right? Like they were pulling yeah. cards from each other's worlds, right? Like they were. Okay, yeah. So yeah, we have both of them on the on the white red deck primarily. Right. Cody's got the splash of green, but. Yeah, the it's really just like Minsk and Boo. And, and it's a few. Yeah, there's like, a few. But I mean, Minsk and Boo is the reason you're right. in green. <laughs> the Dryad is kind of interesting. Is, is this also the Scape Shift deck, or am I missing? No, no. The Dryad turns on the Territorial Kavu yeah. and gives him a little bit of extra just like uh, land reach, right? So Nice. And then there's the Yavamaya that exists just as mana fixing. Is that true? Or is there another combo? He has uh, Nif Nissa. Nissa. Okay. Okay. And then we have Dan, who we've seen a lot of already today. Right. Uh, which of these decks do you like more? Uh, I, th I think Dan's deck's more consistent. I think that Cody's... I don't like Cody's mana base. Like, he didn't get the, get the dorks. He didn't get the, the speed up. Uh, the, outside of Lotus, right? Cody gets the Lotus start. He, he's great. But outside of that, I think that deck needs a little more velocity. And I just don't think he has the velocity. Yeah. Uh, Dan's deck does have a lot of cards we've never seen before. Yeah. Do you think Guts. that's... Yeah, right. Good there's stuff. Like, there's gut. There's... Uh, I mean... I mean We've seen Othari, but it right. hasn't made a huge... Like, yeah, it's, it's, it's not every time. Yeah. Blood Boil Sorcerer is new, Anim Pakal. I've seen Blood Boil before. It's it's a solid initiative. Like okay. it gets, it, It's not often, but like if you just want one more initiative body, it's the, the red uncommon initiative body. Okay. And Anim's new, right? For sure. Um, so are these cards... Basically, my point is, are these cards that we are going to see every time from now on, or is the, are these cards that are good in this deck? Not necessarily. I mean, I, I think Anim, there's a million cards that are just like Anim. Yeah. Uh, I don't think you'll always see it or not. Uh uh, gut, I think, is interesting enough. Uh, it goes well with Anim, right? Mm -hmm. But again, I don't think it's. It, it, we've talked before that that re that three drop spot in this deck is so True. rich. It just shows that like the, it can be any of these bodies or small variations thereof. Um, if you that yeah, you got to be careful because there's the arena versions of her. Yeah, small variations thereof depending on what your deck's doing, right? So. Um, you've got more artifacts. Maybe you want gut. You want you know this. You want bombardiers. Like bombardier definitely needs to be. See, we'll see more play. Of right? course, like yeah, that's an all star. Right. So for the sideboard of this matchup, I mean, they're both kind of just like grind decks. Are there really cards like? Are you, you're not magazine your opponent who's also on a red deck. Uh, he, he might. I mean, I don't know. I didn't look at his mana base, but uh, I know he did peacekeeper. Is pretty good. Yeah. Uh, the jeet comes in for sure. That that's, yes. that'd be an all star. That seems like a breaker in this deck. Uh, the Adeline gives you a little, get a little more br broad the path. So, yeah, I don't think anything in particular. Uh, I think Cody's is... Doorkeeper pretty, Thrall seems good, right? Doorkeeper seems fine. I don't know if it's great. Yeah, it's but not... Yeah. I don't think Cody's brings in much, to be honest. Do, does he go for the Painter Grindstone? He doesn't have any way to get it. I think he took it just to have it and or stop other people from having it, but yeah. he doesn't really have any way to get it, right? That's reasonable. Okay, right, so they're shuffling up. It looks like Cody is unhappy with his first hand, and Dan is looking. He needed 16 lands. But... <laughs> uh, Dan is also unhappy. So. I think we haven't seen a whole lot of moles on camera. People are mulling, which is fine. Mull aggressively, right? Like, do your thing. Well, yeah, even off camera, I've been seeing a lot of mulligans. Yeah. I am the person who plays 14 lands a lot in this format, but I also don't play decks like this. Right. I play I play tight on lands, too, but I, I'm, I'm starting to move the other way. And I think with Cody's, like, here, like, if you... Just the fact, the issue is, is like he just, does, outside of the Lotus, he just doesn't have the, a dork, right? Correct. Yep. Like if he had a dork, he probably could pull it off. Well, and he's playing mana, mana confluences, mana fixing. Like it's just, right. it's understandable how he got there, but it's not the mana base you want to be able to miss on. Right. There's also every deck here is like. The Plunder is pretty good at this matchup, though. He's, that was a side out in last True. match. The Plunder's sick of this match. That's very fair. Generous Plunderer. Also a first print for us. Yeah, that's a first print. It hasn't been played elsewhere? I don't think so yet. We actually discussed it, like, why didn't it get played elsewhere before? I, recently it was discussed online of, like, this was a card that was kind of hyped, and yeah. then, uh, but it was kind of like, it needs the right, um, Kavu has been. Yeah, yeah Kavu, Kavu got featured last in our uh, series of <laughs> cards that have never been drafted before. Right. Okay, so they're both happy with their hands at this point. We have a Savannah mm -hmm. from Cody into a basic planes from Dan. Another planes, and there's the Stoneforge. Yeah. 
Cody and I were talking about this. This is one of those cards that he doesn't think is like a huge uh, part of his deck, but it's a random one card combo. Right, right, and it just does its thing. I mean, it's what you know. It's definitely fallen out of favor recently, mm-hmm. but it, it's still just so efficient at what it does. You know, it would be nice to see him with the with the Umazawa's Jitte in the board, though. Yeah, I know. Obviously, you don't have it main deck in this field, but it seems pretty strong in the board. And Dan's light on removal, if I recall. So correct. Yeah, I don't. I don't. Let's let's run through a minute. There's Mount Marsh, Marsh and a braid and a braid. Yeah. So I mean, he can deal with the Stoneforge before it. Um, He's not gonna have time though. Right. Well, I mean, right now he had a braid. He could deal with it right now. Right. Right. right? Like, there's also a Palace Jailer that can take out the Germ Token eventually. Right. But Lauren is only removal. Uh, broadside can't take it out. Yeah, there's a lot of things here that don't answer it. Even Chandra. Yeah. Because he needs XL removal. So it's kind of March of Elder Worldly Light only at this point. Yeah, that's it. And Palace Jailer. All right, but there's a Giver of Runes. Unlike Mom, can't just stand in the way of the Germ Token. Right. But there's a White Plume. Okay, initiative is well, going to happen one time at least. Giver gives protection from artifacts. artifacts. Yeah, as well as... as but the Germ colors. Token is not an artifact. Right, but it can get colors from colors too. It's it not can. just artifacts. Correct. But... But it has trample anyway, yep. and it has the ability to hit blocked. Even if it's got protection, you still get exiled. So, correct. If it deals damage to it, right? So I don't think I it actually would. I Think it's just on block, right? I thought it was. If whenever, yeah, whenever oh, it deals combat okay. damage, okay. it exiles yeah. it. So it will just run over right. the creature because it has right. trample. All right, so we've got the initiative, which Cody can pretty swiftly take back. Yeah, playing the okay. initiative there is pretty aggressive. You kind of have to, though. I mean. Even into, I mean, this, this thing. Oh, okay, it doesn't have vigilance though, so you right. will be able to take it back right. each turn. Okay, he's going to seek the beast. I think you do that on your. If you want the land drop, it's like I think you do that on your opponent's turn, Oof. because it gets, it gets until your next end step. And there's the Jetmere's Garden. Right. But they can't use that mana confluence. Wait, is that a Jetmere's Garden? It's Jetmere's Garden. Yeah. Okay. So he's like, do I play the land and play the confluence? So I think he plays the land, plays the confluence, and play leaves the jet mirrors. Yeah. Plays no, he's gonna go. I was gonna. I would have left the jet mirrors, play the land from my hand, play the metamorphose, and play the invasion of Gulbukan there. Okay. Yeah. I mean, just to check the hand. Yeah. But the thing is, there's so few cards that can exile your thing, and if any, the only one that he wouldn't have already cast is Palace Jailer. So right. you're basically checking for Palace Jailer at that right. point. And he gets to go for land because he's now got the initiative. Yep. Which is another reason to not care about that, uh, to, to play, make your play. Because right. you're already going to get a land. You don't have to worry about the land advantage. Right. Well, he had a land in hand anyway, though. That's Whereas, what, this is what I'm saying, though. Right. You, you don't have to worry about, you don't need to stack all the cards in your hand. You can right. just leave the jet mirrors in exile because you already have enough lands. Okay. Let's see what's over there. There's a Blood Boil Sorcerer. Yeah, he's got Solitude Caracas. Invasion, land, land. I yeah, think. I think this is games Cody's to lose. Uh, I just yeah. I don't see anything in Dan's hand that I see a blood boil and a blood boil can take the initiative two back lands. and move up, but so he can hit, get the initiative back, play blood boil, move it up one more to do the five damage. Sure, but I mean, but I don't know if that does it at this point, right? Like I don't think there's any, any path he can take that does anything. Right. So hit. He could really try to accelerate so and to get in the skeleton. He's maybe? just gonna box, so he's not. So here comes the blood boil to. All right, I've got to... Yeah. I'll send, hit Dan in, uh, or send Peter in. Oh, you're good. Hey, monkey. So we have this... Uh, so we have a Web Plume Adventurer that is hey, taking Peter. the initiative back, and, and we also are accelerating the initiative with the Blood Bell Sorcerer. Uh, the question is whether Cody can... Whether he can convert all this value from the initiative into beating the Cauldre Complete token. It doesn't feel like there's a whole lot he can do. It's kind of like facing on Progenitus. It's, even if you are ahead on grind value, you're just still losing life at such a fast rate. So, the only two people who are done are Elaine and Brandon, who have still been playing the round one. I love it. I let them know that they are the last two that we need on camera, so hopefully, uh, once two players are available, that one, one of those two will be on camera. We are watching Cody with a Calder Complete in play, mm-hmm. beating down Dan. Uh, now there's also a Solitude in play, but Dan started the initiative train, has yep. taken it back after losing it to the Caldra token, mm-hmm. and is now getting Solituded. Uh, so he's moving ahead of the initiative, but he's about to lose it again. 
and is just also taking massive chunks of his life out with this culture complete. Yep. So that is White Plume Adventure up top. White Plume Adventure on and top, giver. and a Giver of Runes on the side. Yep. And the Giver is uh, is doing an admirable job of blocking one damage from the yep. from if, if it needs to from the Germ Token. Yeah. The only problem is Cauldron Complete is keyword soup, and one of those is Trample. Uh, one of them is Trample. Yes. Yeah. Luckily, the Exile doesn't happen because it, does, it prevents all the damage to be dealt. Correct, but it just takes the initiative back. Exactly. Each time. Yeah. So yeah, the only the only two uh, things we see from Dan's side of the board are March of Otherworldly Light and Palace Jailer to, ah, okay. to stop the situation. Can I get that? Okay. And we haven't seen the Palace Jailer yet. No, there's a Bombardiers in hand. Ooh, which cannot deal with the Cauldron Complete because both the Damage, yeah. equipment and the germ are indestructible. Correct. Yeah. As silly as it is. Yep. That is a card I've played in Modern a few times. So there's the Bombardier. 19 to 13. Okay, so we're not just going to be able to... No. I mean, we could push through three damage right now. Yep, sure can. I mean, he can definitely take oh, the two. initiative back as well. Two damage. It's only, I thought it was a 3-3. Three, three. It's a 2-2. Two, two. They're both going down the left side of the initi of the Undercity. Okay. Uh, so uh, there's not there's going to be a trap and then drawing some cards, but there, yep. we're not going to... There's, there's really nothing here that can answer the germ token is the trouble. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's just trying to race to get to the throne to see if there's something he got out of his own deck. Yep. Probably yep. the Palace Jailer. Uh, yeah, there's, like you said, there's nothing else besides March and Palace. Correct. That's okay. from from my reading of it. Mm -hmm. um, we are in a we, we are still in game one. Oh, okay. So. I'm just like reading all these new okay. cards that I've never seen before, like Anim Pocket. Actually, there's a balance. Oh, you're right. Okay, balance. We can balance away. He'd have to get rid of all of his own creatures first. Well, but yes, we lose all but two. But yeah, well. I'm saying Dan Dan has to get rid of his own creatures if he wants to get rid of the the germ token. Hey, get rid of the equipment. Doesn't balance balance art. Oh no, it balance, doesn't balance artifacts. Right. Notably, yeah. does not get rid of artifacts. Okay. I was like, for me, the key to balance is planeswalkers. It doesn't balance away planeswalkers. Yeah. Maybe this is the key with broadside bombardiers. Is you use the bombardiers to sacrifice all your own creatures so you can balance to clear off the germ. Only one a turn. I know. Or one one a yeah, second. You gotta go yeah. slow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this is, this is a tough spot for Dan. Yeah. And based on everything we're seeing on the board, it seems like Dan is in a pretty commanding position, other than the fact that he's just losing wildly. Yep. Okay, so they were checking, I think, keywords on... Yeah. Just saying, are you sure it doesn't exile your thing? Yep, doesn't deal any damage. There were two counters on that solitude for some reason, but I don't think that's going to be the thing that sways the ship. Uh, from the, the forge, right? Ah, that makes sense. I mean, you throw the Thalia, I'd have to deal four damage in yeah. combat. And now... Now we see not a bad play because of the Caracas, which could juggle the Thalia if needed. True. Yeah. And we're actually getting really close to being able to recast the, or move the Caldera complete if we need to. That's a good, great. That's a great call. Yeah, Dan is Dan made a pretty heads-up play by getting rid of the Thalia before that Car Caracas took care of things. There's the Minskin Boo. Dear God, okay. Yep, so now, next turn, if we hit a land, we can move the Cauldron Complete over to Boo. Yeah, at this, at this point, I think we're just going through the motions. I don't think there's... I think there were very few cards that got Dan out of this, and now yep. I think there are none. So, we have to... He'd have to go Palace Jailer into attack everything at Minskin Boo, and even then, I think he's still pretty far behind. Yeah. So I think if I'm, if I'm Cody, I I think I serve with a Cauldron Complete where it's going to trample over. Yeah, absolutely. And Dan is just squeezed on so many directions. And it looks like that questing Druid is starting to pump up. Mm -hmm. Wait, there shouldn't be a counter... Oh, from the red side of it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. There's a link to our Twitter. There's also a link to all of our socials, just stantlotus.org, if anyone is interested in following along with this format. Mm -hmm. There's a Discord that's pretty active, and there's lots of drafts, so if you want to get involved in any of these, feel free to hop onto there. Dan goes down to three. Yikes. From the, yeah, from, from hitting the, uh, the trap or whatever. Exactly, it is. trap. So now he's just dead to the boo fling. So what we're playing here for anyone that's just tuning in is Vintage Earth History Draft, which is arguably the most uh, complicated and skill testing of formats. You get to draft an entire spreadsheet and you go through kind of like a fantasy football draft in a round robin style. 
uh, going back and forth. So the first player takes Black Lotus, and the second player takes any card that is anything other than Black Lotus. And you go th that way until everyone has 46 cards, and then you build a deck out of it. The power level tends to be somewhere between uh, competitive EDH and Canadian Highlander, so it's not quite vintage level, but certainly well beyond modern. Mm -hmm. uh, and you have decks that win on turn one with Time Vault, and you have decks that grind through with Elves for a win on turn six uh, by beating down with two twos. Uh, it's pretty wild all over the place, and everything's open deckless, and you have access to energy flux. So you have incredible sideboard power coming through that just makes these games really interesting. Mm -hmm. So right now we have two red-white decks that are beating down. Dan's is a little more consistent. Cody has some mana issues, but Cody obviously, as you can see, has incredible bangers by going into that Naya splash yep. with things like Minsk and Boo. Yeah. This is a little bit of the concern, uh, I think, that we had about Dan's deck when Dan started to fill in the lower mono value spots on the deck instead of reaching up for Thought Not Seer and Reality Smasher. Yeah. Was he could get stuffed by fours and fives. All right, what happened between the game? Uh, Co Cody is in a pretty commanding position now that he has a Minsk and Boo resolved as well. Yeah. Okay. Um, so we're. I, I don't see any path for Dan to get a victory, but it probably all starts with Palace Jailer if there is one. Yeah, so. If oh, we... I think the camera just got bumped. It might be fun. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. They've been moving the mats around. So if we if we attack with just Bombardiers, and we throw Giver of Rune... So we attack Bombardiers at Minsk and Boo, mm -hmm. and then we throw Giver of Ruins before Blocks at Boo. That leaves the Planeswalker and Cauldra complete. So we would get another Boo. We would put counters on it. Yeah, he like, could just finish off the... He could finish off Minsk and Boo. You would have to send more than more than uh, you have to send all three creatures at it is the problem. Well, can't you just sacrifice one of the creatures to kill the Minsk? You could do that, but then you're left with Boo. Sure. And then Boo picks up Caldera complete and kills you. Yeah. Because it is trample. Yeah, it's not like a great spot. No. <laughs> well, actually, the germ now is bigger, so you have to kill you have to kill Minsk and Boo, right? So you would send you would swing the bombardiers. You have to swing the bombardiers no matter what. Which means it can get blocked by both creatures and killed. You, you sure can. So, so it would have to throw itself at Minsk. So you declare Bombardiers as an attacker. So I, okay, gut does changes it gut? things. Right. Does it? Yes. Uh, because it can create a, a hasty 4 1, I believe. Gut can create a hasty 4 1 with Menace. Yep. I don't know if that changes anything, but yes, it can do that. It creates another. Th it's not. None of this is Palace Jailer. What is. Is that Pitting Needle? No, it's not Pitting Needle. I don't know what that card is. It's one of the new cards. Uh, non representative images. It cost two, so it couldn't have been. It's there and gone, so it's sacked. Interesting. Is it Anampakal, maybe? No. No, it only cost two. Because he played the gut. Very interesting. And then whatever it was, it was an artifact, and it got, I believe it was an artifact, and it got sacked to the uh, Bombardiers. Oh, that oh, that might be Unlicensed Hurt. No, no, that's not the Unlicensed Hurt. What, what the heck, dude, is it? Oh, is it Talisman of Conviction? That could be that's it. It's it could Talisman be different... of Conviction. That's what I thought, but I've never seen that art for it. So we sacked it to make a token with Gut, and we're attacking everything, but I don't know where. Like... This is not a math is for blockers scenario, because I don't think we can 11 out of nowhere. If Cody doesn't if Cody doesn't block, he it's, dies. It's this one. It's the Talisman of Conviction from the Fallout, Fallout. set. There it is. Okay. Mystery solved. Cody's running the numbers now. Because one... Still inside combat after damage is done in what is known colloquially as the desert phase. You can throw <laughs> something with bombardiers. Here we go. Here's the, the block on bombardiers. So throw, throw in six. Gut. That looked like a motion to throw gut at you. That did look like that. Is that thing from Dan? Bombardiers is fucking stupid. It's about going to be the third game that I had no business winning. He just threw a six at his face, and yeah. the rest of the creatures got through. Yeah, yeah. So Cody missed blocked. It looks no. Like. He, there was no way. It was like it didn't matter. He had to block there no matter what, pretty much. I, told I you. think he was just dead no matter what. Yeah, I told you. He threw five at his face. Because gut can't attack, right? But it's five, so it lowers Co Cody's life total from eleven to six immediately. Or yeah, eleven to six immediately. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Then you block yeah. the, he said this is the third. He said this is the third game he's won that has no business winning because it brought that Bombardiers. All right. Called, well, Calder complete was tapped. I, I, I asked you at the beginning of this draft how Bombardiers was doing. And I told you it hadn't done well yet. I, so it's, I, 
It just needs one player to rock it to the rock it, it up. Yep, it that's, not, what, that's the thing about Verity, like a card that's been even Thassa's Oracle for a long time, it middled, 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 and mm-hmm. it just didn't perform. And then boom, it won a draft, and you know. Yep, this is a really good example of the very few times it pays off to be a constructed player. Yeah, true. Um, coming into this, um, because uh, my wife and I were talking about it, I was like, there's a possible you might have to audible into a spot, and if I did that, I would set you up with an Is It deck that played both Tishana's Tidebinder and Broadside Bombardiers, because it looks like people respect Tidebinder, but nobody respects Bombardiers, yeah, correct. so all you're going to do is turn creatures sideways and throw them, and she's like, alright, cool, because that's all I can handle. John Ryan time. loves Bombardiers. He plays it in Legacy, all like Bombardiers with one move. Oh, it's incredible. Yeah, yeah. It, it powers at least three different decks two of them are effectively red prison the third is goblins because it is a goblin it is a goblin so sideboard here yes uh jitte is the one call out that we know for sure is coming in you're playing as a creature deck so it has to correct right That's uh Phyrexian revoker is probably pretty good for dan uh what do we have that can be revoked what is dan's list let's or uh, like at cody's list so cody, oh, oh, cody oh, has all the walkers yeah, yeah if, if, if revoker is in dan's sideboard 100 percent that comes in yeah oh dan also has a gta in the board correct oh okay i thought cody had the GTA no, no so cody forward. cody should have the gta but didn't need it because he didn't know if he's going to play the stone forge that's for fine if you raw raw dogging gta off the top at totally. any point in time is fair game exactly Karn, probably not the matchup for it. Fiery Confluence could be useful. It is, because uh, it clears the board. Cody has uh, a lot of small creatures, and just... Um, it was in Cody's matchup that I, I noted that this is the kind of format... I say format. This is the a kind, the kind of draft where a card like Archon of Cruelty can overwhelm a board state really easily because only one or two threats are present. Mm. So when you can clear the board out and do two damage to all creatures and then two damage to your face, clear your board and then swing in, and it's very powerful. Um, I realize now why I was so dismissive of Dan's chances, and mm-hmm. it's because I thought that Cauldron Complete had lifelink, because mm. I thought it was Batter Skull. It does, no. not, it does not have lifelink. They link. work well in concert. Yes. Yeah. Um, so pa- in, in that regard, Path to Exile is also going to be a decent look, too, because you yes. can get the germ. Very germ. And it, it takes seven mana to move Cauldron Complete, which is a very long time. It's a long time. And Adeline we know Cody's deck is not, shaky in mana. Yes. Adeline's probably not useful enough here. <sighs> That's just go faster. Yeah. And, um, and you were not guaranteed to get the beat stem. No. I... I don't know about Thaya Heretic Cathar. No, that might no be a little way. too slow. Yeah. From Cody, I don't see anything that jumps out. Maybe Doorkeeper? Doorkeeper. But even that. Yeah, because really it, stop it stops anything? the. Yeah, initiative. Okay, yes. It also. Uh, who has Chrome Mox? Because if Dan has Chrome Mox. Oh, he doesn't have. But it's really funny, actually. Doorkeeper mm-hmm. Thrall stops the Chrome Mox imprint. It also stops the One Ring. Ooh, Big True. Dan has that, right? Mm hmm. Yeah. So that might not be a bad look. Lion Sash is also a piece of equipment that does gain life, so it's it can fine. sustain yeah. you a little bit, right? Um, Null Rod isn't useful enough, I don't think. No. It only stops the one ring, really. Well, Monocrypt and Vaulted stops them long term, but this is something we noted about Dan's deck. Aside from that turn one burst, yeah. like turns two and three, you can just cast your stuff off your lands. You don't need those. So I think Null Rod, could, it could walk Cody down a path that is not great if Cody decides to bring in Null Rod. Totally. <gasps> oh, this happening. The play happened. Cody managed to do turn one Black Lotus Lures replay Black Lotus. Lotus. Yep. So he didn't couldn't convert it into another play. Uh, but it is threatening. It's pretty good. Because at any point in time, if a four mana walker comes off the top, like yes. that is not game, but it's very difficult. Or a seven mana Calder complete. That is fair. You just yeah. cast Calder complete next turn. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, because you rebuy the Lotus. <laughs> it's pretty freaking good. Mm-hmm. Oh, man. I would love to see if Cody just... Wait, ripped... is that Calder complete in his hand? Is it really? I don't know. I'd I'm be amazing. Amazing. seeing. There's a card that just keeps floating towards the right-hand side of his hand that he's covering up. Okay. Yeah. Alright, we have Mana and Crypt. It's I'm very crypt. bad at these. Yeah, Mana Crypt and uh, Mountain right now. And I see in hand there's Gut. Oh, there's the ring. Oh, there's one ring? Yeah. Nice. All of us all the way on the left. Looks okay. like Gut's coming out first. God, it only costs three mana, but makes four ones, which is fun. Yep. And just like another creature or artifact. Yes. Okay. So you can... Oh, oh nice. Stomp. That's why he didn't have a play. He was yep. waiting to cast the stomp. Getcha. Oh, so he did... Okay, so he stomped on... on okay, this makes sense. Stomped on his own turn. Played Still it. not using the Lotus. It's interesting not to recast, use the Lotus recast. I think him. that might have actually been the shortcut. That's why the giant is in on the battlefield. Oh, okay. He recast the giant. Okay, he cast the giant as well. Yep. That makes a lot of sense. And I think he's just shortcutting it. Yep. 
We've that, had a cycled miscalc ca ca uh, countering a basalt monolith. Cycled miscalc? Or whichever one that cycled in four spikes when you cycle it. Oh, got it. Yeah, yeah, that circular weird one that has. Whatever. Yeah, whatever one that she has. It's from it's, Onslaught, yeah. Yeah, or Circular yeah. Logic. I think it's miscalc. No, no, it's not Cirque. It's not Cirque. It's not, no, miscalculation oh. has cycling, but it's oh. from masks, okay. I believe. So it, it counters. Whichever one is in her deck that. It's not. Check Elaine's list. I can, I'm pretty sure I can tell you which one it is. Yeah. Uh, and then a Dak Faden that stole a Time Vault. That is fantastic. That's sweet. Uh, Divert? That's no. not a cycle. You must, I think you must have ordered already. Oh, complicate. Oh, complicate. complicate, not circular. Yeah. Cycle complicate. Yeah. That's pretty sweet. <laughs> it's weird because it's in the arena with um, Arcanus. Yes. All right, so we have a bone there it pressure. Is. There's a, a it was falling <laughs> in Cody's hands. So you Cold don't play. Complete. Yeah, you stomp on turn two to replay the Lotus, and then you play. That's pretty amazing. Just a hard cast uh, culture complete. Mm -hmm. The and Lotus now, is threatened in the graveyard now, though. Yep. And now we start the dear God. I hope I find path. Correct. Train from Dan. But even then, he just move the. He can move it over. Not next turn, but two turns from now, he can move the yep. culture complete over to the Bone Crusher. Yeah. So uh, I I didn't mention it was I think Adam or Kyle it was Kyle uh, Kyle was looking at Brotherhood's end when I went out there during the draft yes and also cast into the fire oh cast into the fire is pretty <laughs> brutal and I feel like if you're playing red and you see the one ring get drafted yeah. if you know about cast into the fire you should be thinking about that card it's I don't want to say a braid with upside but yeah it only deals one damage yeah but it does. It hits two, right? Yeah, bang bang. But yeah, not, if they have, if they have a two toughness creature, it's not very good. No, it's just it really is just the exile ring, correct? Uh, element. It's very thematic too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, my favorite part about this is that the eagle is on it, which is exactly the problem people have with the series, which is <laughs> why didn't the birds just take the ring in the first place? There, there's a lot of reasons. Uh, I believe Tolkien's exact quote was, "Well." Just shut up. <laughs> my favorite, my, like, I do, I don't want to say as a native of New Jersey, I enjoy Kevin Smith because I'm from New Jersey, but it's because he feels the same way about the Lord of Rings that I do, which is just, it's a lot of walking. Yep. Yeah, exactly. That scene from I, I've seen Clerks, Clerks too. too. Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay, um, so this is a ton of pressure that Cody's presenting. Oh, there's the balance. balance. Oh, never mind. There's no pressure that Cody is presenting. <laughs> <laughs> We've been waiting for this for so long. And even more brutal, the Calder Complete is now stranded in play. Yeah, because you can't buy back the, the Lotus and it's gone. Yes. Like, there's the Lotus is no longer lurking. And the Stone Forge is basically dead at this point. It probably grabs a Lion Sash if he was heads up yep. enough to bring it in. But other than that, the Stone Forge is a dead card, too. Yep. Oh, is that was that the only piece of equipment in the main? I uh, believe so. We double check that. Wait, there's no batter skull drafted. Nobody no drafted batter the skull. skull clamp. Correct. Nobody got the clamp. Yeah, it's just Calder. So if he brought in the lion sash, that's an option. Mm -hmm. But other than that, he might have just gotten completely wrecked by balance, yeah. as balance does. Yeah, that's rough. Um, Dan's done a really good job playing these matches yes. as well. Like he's obviously a very strong player. Yeah, Dan. I, so we, we we talk about I feel like every time on VRD how it's dangerous to bring in a vintage rotisserie draft oh, sorry um, a vintage cube draft or a constructed mindset to try and build your deck around yes but I think Dan either knows or started with the idea of like Boros Initiative in like at least Legacy and a little bit in cube draft yep. can be a strong place to start and we're seeing a lot of this because we thought he was going to go Eldrazi for a while mm -hmm. but didn't didn't shape up but now it's just this a lot of initiative plus good stuff. Uh, Ooh, okay. We just, we just got an update on prize pool. It looks like uh, the Chicago folks are bringing in a very expensive cheese and prosciutto as their win as their buy-in. All right. We already have a good layout of uh, various bourbons. Mm -hmm. uh, I think there uh, there's a vodka out there that we hadn't seen before. There's a I believe a March of the Machines sealed box. <laughs> there's a sealed box of March of the Machines. Two Bud Lights with lime, fresh from the line. Uh huh. Yep. They myself came and my wife came from the Budweiser factory. Yep. Thank they were you. there yesterday. No problem. Otharius and Blaine. Yes, this is a card. Okay, can we bring this up? Because I had a question about um, Othari itself. Yeah, this card is silly. Okay, Othari attacks. Uh, two two. You get an experience counter for Rebel. Okay, I thought the Rebels actually did something for Othari. Instead, it just they, makes more they Rebels. They do. They let you bring her back. Tap an untapped rebel you control. Okay. Yeah, so, so they act as her phoenix reanimate. Got it. I didn't realize. I thought they were rogues or something like that, part of the outlaw grouping. No, of, this no is before that. Different. This is from uh, the commander set. Yes, I knew that. I just thought, like, I mean, look, we didn't get the grouping <laughs> of outlaws <laughs> until Thunder Junction, but the, a lot of this stuff is 
built at the same time. Correct. Um, Rebels just kind of stand on their own as that theme from Masks Block. Yes. Right? And then a little bit, I think we got some new ones in the Horizon sets. One of them. We got new Rebels in... Uh, where was it? it was, I thought it was one of the supplementals. Like yeah. The, yeah uh, Modern uh, Masters or something. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah, exactly. That's what I meant. Uh, Modern Masters or... Um, what do you want? Mo- Modern Horizons 1-2. Yeah. Right, somewhere in there. I thought it was, like I said, I, I thought it was either Rogues or something to do with Outlaws. I was like, oh, that's cute. Now that we have this Outlaw theme, we can build into it a little bit. Um, yes. Yeah, there's been there's been a lot of... Uh, there's been a, a handful uh, of them. Notably... Vengeful, vengeful rebel from Kaladesh is uh, an Aetherborn warrior, which makes uh, complete sense. Yeah, right. Okay, so Dan is uh, pressuring pretty hard. Was pressuring oh, with that Athari, field. but the Athari got taken out with the Solitude. Yep. So that's not even going to come back. We just Adam was getting his teeth kicked in by Lane. Teeth kicked in game one. And then he's like... What chapter is this fable? Okay, it's about to flip. Draws Demonic yes. Consultation and says, all right, I got one out. Demonic Consultation, name it thoughts of Oracle. It was at the bottom, plays Oracle and wins. That's disgusting. <laughs> like, like, it was ugly. Oh, Balance switched this game around, didn't yes, it? Yes, it did. Very much so. Not necessarily because Cody's mana base was shaky, but because Call of the Complete costs seven to move. Right. Correct. Like, that is just... Without a lot of fast mana, that is an almost insurmountable. Thanks, Joe the Plumber. Hey, yeah, thanks for subscribing. So what happened with the culture complete? Where is that? Oh, it's still it's sitting right, there. It's okay, it's, still yeah. there. it's just literally getting your reflection on me. Yeah, just chilling on the sidelines. Yeah, for anyone that does have uh, Amazon Prime, feel free to throw us a subscription. Oh, appreciate it. I didn't know we had. I didn't know we had Prime support. Yeah, Prime support. There we go. Ooh, a human room. There we go. Oh, the new Jorka Dean from, uh, is it All Will Be One? All Will Be One, yeah. Yeah. We were, we were examining when the new Rebels are from. Oh. That's a mainline set. That is in Standard right now. You could play Rebels in Standard right yeah, now. Apparently so. Also this weird Doctor Who card. Because why not? Ace Trails Rebel. Sure. <laughs> Unlike Vengeful Rebel? Rebel, which is a warrior. All right, so if you're Cody, what's what's your sweep up card? Uh, Brotherhood's End was that him? Was that somebody else? No, no that's that somebody else. That is not Cody. Your sweep up is hope that you roll some. He roll some bad mana crit mana. Uh, no, that... I think you're. I, I hate to say it, but I think your your sweep up card is Comet. Roll a six. Roll sure. a two. Roll a six. Roll a two. Roll a six. Roll a two. Roll yeah. a two, and just end up with like six squirrels on board to block for a little while, and then roll a two. Roll a six. Roll a two. Oh, sorry. Roll a six. Roll a two. Roll a six. Roll a six. <laughs> <laughs> also, bad mana crit mana and uh, one ring. You're you're kind of hoping sure. for just yeah. And I don't think that Cody has a way. Uh, yeah, fourth year Lingus doesn't even go wide enough to really take care of the problem. It'll help. I mean, oh, for sure. Actually, okay. So you talk about Monocrypt, right? Uh, we actually have a ring on board that's going to... Yeah, I said add one ring. I okay. roll those two together. All right. And he's at 11 right now? Seasoned Engineer. I can't tell what that number is. I think it's, I think 11. it's 11. Yeah. So yeah, if he's at 11, he's effectively at 7, effectively at... Four. So all mm-hmm. Cody needs to do is pump in four mana off the fourth Aerial Lingus. Uh, that's three mana Thalia. Ooh, Ooh, she star. puts creatures in tapped, or is that just lands? Creatures and lands. Yeah. Creatures yeah, so that makes the fourth a lot worse. Yeah, the fourth goes away. But, I mean, Cody Cody feels live at this point still. For another turn or so. Yeah. Yeah. He's at 13 life, so he has probably one more turn. Yeah. With the Cadre developers behind the scenes, do you think we could get an advantage bar? Uh, no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if Wasi can't do it anymore. Right? <laughs> exactly, it's too much work. Yeah, so I mean, you got to sit there and, and, and increase the pips to the yeah, right, and then decrease the pips. There's, right, there's, there's a handshake. Yeah. Oh, okay. That was a fun right. one. Oh, 